Hey YouTube, it's Zoe. This past semester was overwhelming, to put it mildly, and because of that, I didn't read much. At least, I thought I didn't read anything since the beginning of the year, and that's why I haven't filmed any wrap-ups this year so far. But it turns out I did read some things. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to tell you what I thought about the books I've read so far this year. Some are for pleasure and some I read for school. So <laughs> let's get started. The first book I read in 2018 was I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu, which I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is about a high school senior named Desi Lee who is very ambitious and a go-getter. She has achieved everything that she's put her mind to, except love. And one day she is watching K-dramas with her dad when she realizes that these K-dramas have a formula to love. So she writes down the formula and then sets out to make a boy fall in love with her. At the end of last year, beginning of this year, I was really into watching K-dramas. I watched Hello My Twenties, which was so cute. That was the one that got me into K-dramas. I started watching Strong Girl Bong Soon. I didn't finish that one for some reason, probably school, but that's what inspired me to pick up this book, and it's all about K-dramas. There's even a guide, the Ultimate K-drama Starter Guide, which helps you pick the perfect K-drama for you. I also love the relationship between the father and the daughter because I'm very close to my dad, so I could really relate. And I'm always down to read a book, especially contemporary, about ambitious go-getting women. So many things were in this book's favor. However, like I said before, the main character, Desi, is following a formula. Contemporary romances are already pretty predictable enough. We know exactly how and where this story is going. I didn't really feel the need to finish the book quickly because I knew where it was going to go. And the ending. <laughs> the ending <laughs> was so frustrating. I, I mean, in hindsight, it, it might have been okay, but when I was reading it, oh my goodness, I I was yelling at the book. I was yelling at the main character. She made dumb decisions. Oh. Next, I read Persepolis, The Story of a Childhood by Marjan Satrapi. This is a graphic novel memoir depicting her life growing up in Iran during the Islamic Revolution. I didn't even know that there was an Islamic Revolution in Iran. I never learned about this in school. Never. Didn't even know. Oh my gosh. Public school really failed me in this regard. This was so educational. It's, like I said before, it's a graphic novel, so I was able to learn a lot about an event I didn't even know existed, mostly through pictures. But this isn't just a history book, it's also a coming of age story. So you're able to see such a momentous event, a revolution through the eyes of a child when she's also dealing with teenage angst and figuring out who she is. I picked this up because Hannah from A Clockwork Reader told me to. Her family is from Iran, so she was telling me stories about her family and we were reading this book together. This is a very quick read. If you want to learn some history and you also want to be emotionally affected, pick this up. There's also a sequel. I have it over there. Have not read it yet. One of the best graphic novels I've read in quite a long time. I would compare it to Mouse by Art Spiegelman, but I think I like this one even more since there's more of an emotional connection with the author. I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then in March, yes, I only read two books in January and February, hence why I didn't film any wrap-ups. But in March, I read the entire Raven Cycle series by Maggie Stiefvater. I read all four books in one day during my last 24-hour readathon. I will link that somewhere on the screen and I'll also put it in the description if I remember. If you don't know what this is about, this follows Blue Sargent who lives in a house with many women including her mom, her aunts, and her mom's friends who are all psychic. Except Blue herself 
is not psychic. Her only ability is that she is like a battery. She can amplify the powers of others. Kind of a lame gift. <laughs> this also follows a group of private school boys, the Raven Boys, including Gancy, Ronan, Adam, and Noah, who are all searching for a long-lost Welsh king named Glendower. It is said that Glendower will grant a wish to whomever wakes him. So the Raven Boys and Blue team up to find Glendower, and then a lot, <laughs> a lot of other things happen. That's just the very surface of it. This is mostly a character-driven story. While a lot does happen plot-wise, it mostly focuses on character development and the relationship between characters. Those are my favorite types of stories. I won't like a book unless I can root for one of the characters, and I was rooting for everybody. And I shipped everybody! Oh my goodness, I can't even talk about it. I want to spoil so many things. <laughs> I'll just encourage all of you to please go read this book. It is so incredibly atmospheric. This is set in a small town of Henrietta, Virginia, and you really feel like you are there. It's a made up town, but it feels so real and I can see all of the greenery, I can smell the dew on the grass in the morning. <laughs> the characters are so dynamic, so fleshed out, they feel real. Even though this is a fantastical, a supernatural novel, everything feels grounded. I love pretty much all the characters. I think my favorite would be Blue, because I relate to her the most. I also love Ronin. He gets better with age. I can't tell you which one was my favorite or even which one was my least favorite. They all pretty much blended together since I read them back to back to back to back. I think maybe Blue Lily Lily Blue was my favorite? Was it? But I can tell you that in all, I give this series a 5 out of 5 stars. I immediately want to go back and read it again. I think that this is a series that just gets better the more times you reread it because you were able to pick up on new details. I've read the first book three times now and I appreciate it more every single time. I read The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory which I gave four out of five stars. This follows two high-powered professional people, Alexa who is the mayor of Berkeley's chief of staff and Drew who is a Los Angeles pediatric surgeon. They meet one night when they get stuck in a hotel's elevator together and they hit it off. Drew is in town for his ex-girlfriend's wedding and so he is desperate to have a wedding date and asks Alexa to be his. She says yes in a spur of the moment decision and they hit it off even further. They start up a relationship but it is a long distance relationship because she's in Northern California, he's in Southern California. Just from the synopsis I was already sold. I am a fan of all of the tropes that this utilizes from the getting stuck in an elevator together or just an enclosed space together, two strangers or even two enemies who get stuck in one place alone. I live for that. And I'm always down for a good fake relationship. Alexa poses as Drew's girlfriend so she has to pretend to be more in love with him than she actually is, but then she starts to fall in love. Oh, what is real? I also appreciate that this was an interracial couple. Alexa is black and Drew is white, and that they had safe sex. It was explicitly stated. This did become a little repetitive after a while, especially because it was a long distance relationship, so they had to fly to see one another, and they only ever had a weekend together, so it was only <laughs> like a few pages of them being together. <laughs> I was dying. Parts of their relationship started to become frustrating, especially the miscommunication. They both wanted things, but they never explicitly asked for things, and so they never got those things, even though they both wanted it. <laughs> but I, in all, I enjoyed it. I recommend it if you are not afraid of romance books with a little bit of steamy times in it. It's not super explicit. This is not erotica. It pretty much fades to black every single time, but there is still 
some things occurring. Okay, moving on to the next book. Or should I say books? Because we have all of the Shakespeare books I read this past semester. It was in a Shakespeare class, so we had to read pretty much all of Shakespeare's works, except Romeo and Juliet. For some reason, we didn't read that. Probably because it's so popular, most people read it in high school, including me. Also in this class, we had to act out these plays. We were given a scene partner from the beginning and assigned certain roles. I was Rosencrantz in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead. Macbeth in Macbeth. Actually, my scene partner and I split Macbeth, so I only did half of Macbeth. Beatrice in Much Ado About Nothing. And I was Iago in Othello. We also read The Taming of the Shrew, The Merchant of Venice, Twelfth Night, King Lear, A Midsummer Night's Dream, and Hamlet. I was very apprehensive about this class going into it because I've never been in an English class where we had to go up to the front of the class and act it out, but it gave me such an appreciation for Shakespeare's works. They are meant to be acted out. They're meant to be seen on on stage and I really understand the characters who I portrayed. Like the Raven Cycle, these all kind of blurred together so I can't give you exact star ratings for every single one of the plays that we read. But Much Ado About Nothing and Hamlet were my faves. I much prefer his comedies over his tragedies but this is a good one. <gasps> Obviously. <laughs> what type of statement is that? Hamlet by Shakespeare is good. Duh, Zoe! I think The Merchant of Venice and Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead were my least favorites. This one wasn't even written by Shakespeare, it was written by Tom Stoppard, but it is inspired by the characters from Hamlet. I think I mostly didn't enjoy this one because my class was an 830 a.m. class and this was way too existential for me to process at 8 30 a.m. In all, I would give Shakespeare's works four out of five stars. They're meant to be seen, not read. <laughs> Do I sound like an intellectual now? You must go to Shakespeare's Globe to fully appreciate Shakespeare's work. I also was in a modern American poetry class this past semester, and because of that, I obviously read quite a lot of poems. I'm reading off my class's syllabus because there were so many random poems, I don't remember most of them. We read Robert Frost, we read some Gertrude Stein tender buttons. That was an experience. <laughs> we read The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot, works by Wallace Stevens, and Montage of a Dream Deferred by Langston Hughes. I wrote both of my long papers on Langston Hughes. I really enjoy him. Works by Gwendolyn Brooks and Howell by Allen Ginsberg, Patterson by William Carlos Williams, and Invisible Cities by Italo Calvino. I love Invisible Cities, I love Montage of a Dream Deferred by Langston Hughes, and all of the other ones were okay. Robert Frost is pretty cool. I don't like Gertrude Stein. No, no, no. I think I would give all of the poems I read 3.5 out of 5 stars. I think I would... What is... Oh! <laughs> it's the alarm I set to remind me to play the Harry Potter mobile game, A Hogwarts Mystery, to make sure that I started playing before my lesson was over. My charms lesson. I'm learning Wingardium Leviosa, if you can see. Wow, sorry. Sorry, gotta stop filming now. I have to, I have to go to class. Then I finally finished Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan, which I gave 4 out of 5 stars. This follows a few crazy rich families who live in Singapore and China, and the gossiping and scheming that occurs when the heir to one of the family's fortunes brings home his girlfriend who is not rich and was raised in America. This took me, I think, six months to finish, not because it's bad or slow or anything. I was actually really enjoying it. It's filled with wacky situations and I was laughing out loud, but for some reason I put it down for a couple of months, forgot I was reading it, and then picked it back up. Had to start from the beginning because I forgot everything that had happened, and then I was listening to it as an audiobook before I went to sleep every single night, and I kept falling asleep at the same exact Point. So it was, 
it was a bunch of dumb reasons why it took me six months to finish. I ultimately just sat down one night and finished it. I read like 200 pages in one night after school one day, built up the courage, <laughs> the willpower, and finished it. I really enjoyed it. I love reading about rich people. I don't know why I love reading about people wasting their money on dumb things, but I grew up in middle school reading The Click. This has such a nice relationship between the two main characters. I wish it was fleshed out a little bit more before the events really started to unfold. I wish we had some time where it was just the two of them in New York City being cute and supportive because more than half the book is spent with them apart and you don't really get to see what they're like when they're being themselves. You hear about it from the characters themselves when they're reminiscing on the days when it was just the two of them in New York City, but you don't get to read it with your own two eyes. Also, I know it kind of contradicts what I said earlier about loving to read about rich people, but one thing that I wasn't a fan of in this book was that there were so many in-depth descriptions of material goods, so many names of labels. I pretty much skimmed over the sections when they were talking about fashion. I know it's supposed to show how label obsessed these people are, but it got a little much. <laughs> also, have you seen the trailer for the new movie? Oh my goodness, it looks so good. It looks like exactly how I imagined it when I was reading the book, down to even how the characters look. Nick, woo, 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 he looks good. I also read Furthermore by Tahada Mafi. This is her middle grade book. It follows a girl named Alice who travels to a dangerous mystical land called Furthermore to bring back her missing father and a lot of whimsical kind of Alice in Wonderland like things occur. I read this in one night. As you can see, I got it bargain price. I was walking around Books A Million, saw it on the bargain table, thought, why not pick it up for six dollars? I've seen the cover before. I usually like Tahara Mafi's writing, so I brought it home and I picked it up that night and I didn't stop until I finished it. It is pretty addictive. It is a middle grade, so that explains why it's pretty easy to get through. I think her writing style was perfect for this whimsical of a tale. I always thought it was a little bit too flowery for a dystopian like Shatter Me. Don't come for me, but I always thought it was a little bit too much, but it was, it was just right. Like, <laughs> Goldilocks. However, there was so much effort in describing what things looked like and tasted like. It was definitely a sensory overload. Alice was eating flowers so that she could taste the color. The sun was raining. It was all whimsical. But there wasn't much effort in describing the magic system or how the colors really worked. I felt like I could see everything very, very clearly but I didn't fully understand what was happening. Maybe I'm not meant for whimsical tales. I'm not really a fan of Alice in Wonderland. I like to be grounded in a story. It can be fantastical, like the Raven Cycle. That's fantastical, some weird things go on, but it's still very grounded. I need a good base before we go off in random directions. I need to understand before I can appreciate. And this is a middle grade book. It's not even high fantasy. <laughs> you think I should be able to understand what's happening? Maybe I'm not supposed to look at it so logically and allow myself to get lost, but I can't help it. Anyway, I still gave it a four out of five stars. Very easy to fly through, and I like how she incorporated the senses a lot. And finally, the last book I read in April, the last book I've read so far this year, is Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare, the second book in the Dark Artifices series. And oh, oh my goodness, five out of five stars. What? happened. The next book doesn't come out until the end of this year. I honestly don't know how I'm going to make it. We left it on a very uncertain note. I listened to the last 
50 pages when I was driving home and I finished it 20 minutes from home. I drove the rest of the way in complete silence because I I was in shock. I'm still in shock as you can tell. I'm not making any sense. This is what Cassandra Clare does to me. I love the character development we are getting. We learn a lot of new things about the loved characters and I see relationships developing. I really hope what I want to happen will happen in the next book, especially between two characters. This was such a satisfying book in the series. Usually the second book suffers, you get the sophomore slump in a series. This was not the case. This built upon Lady Midnight so well. So those are the books I have read so far this year. I'm pretty content with the number I have read. I definitely could have read more, but a lot happened this past semester and so I'm not going to beat myself up too much about not reading 30 books so far, not being where I should be in my Goodreads reading challenge. Let me know down below, what's the best book you've read so far this year? For me, I think that would have to be Lord of Shadows, though I also read The Raven Cycle. So <laughs> both of those. <laughs> See, I can't even follow my own directions. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you all soon in my next video. Bye!